Hi, Mark Donovan here from Falcon Imagery, and today I'm going to be talking about the new CFI ACS that just came out April 1st uh, that goes into effect on May 31st of 2024. And so for any of you folks currently just about ready to get your CFI check ride, as long as you get it done before May 31st, you can continue to use the existing CFI PTS. But for those who are going to have a CFI check ride after May 31st, 2024, you're going to have to... Uh, work toward or be tested to the new uh, CFI ACS. So I'm going to go over some of the key changes that are in the uh, CFI ACS and uh, if you have any questions make sure to ask those questions below in the comments section and I'll try to get back to them uh, quickly. Alright we're going to move forward and we're going to talk here about the key changes that occurred in the new CFI ACS relative to the old CFI PTS. So we'll just kind of talk about the top level summary changes. Um, basically on April 1st, 2024, the FAA released the new 111 page CFI Airman Certificate Standard. Um, it replaces the old 188 page CFI Practical Test Standards or PTS document. Um, the effective date on it is May 31st, 2024. So any uh, flight instructor candidate uh, that's getting ready for a check ride, as long as you get the check ride done before May 31st, 2024, you would be held to the CFI PTS standard. Um, anything after May 31st, you will be required to test to the new CFI ACS standard. So if you're on the fence there, uh, either get that uh, CFI and check right in before May 31st, or um, just plan on holding off and, and waiting until after then and using the ACS standard. So overall changes from the CFI PTS to the ACS uh, leave much of the CFI check ride the same. However, uh, the core knowledge elements remain, again, most of the same, but are organized differently and with a significant number of word changes. For example, error medical factors are now known as human factors. Um, also, the CFI ACS provides some needed clarifications. For example, there are completion standard metrics now after each uh, um, in, the, in the skill section uh, for each one of the areas of operation. Unlike the PTS, uh, they basically um, asked for you to, uh, to do the particular maneuver, but regarding the standard metrics, you had to do them um, either relative to the commercial or, for example, private pilot check ride uh, standard metrics. Um, it also brings in some new features and brings back some old features uh, that were in older um, versions of the flight instructor uh, standards. Um, and lastly, it does some modernization with the allowance of electronics now in the check ride, particularly for the cross country flight planning. So if we look specifically at the changes, uh, slow flight um, now um, required as an option uh, for the designated pilot examiner to demonstrate uh, slow flight down to minimum controllable airspeed. Whereas in the past with the ACFI uh, PTS, uh, it was down to a speed just, um, just before the aircraft uh, stall indicator would go off or any buffeting. So now uh, there's a couple tasks in there for either testing to the original just before the stall indicator goes off or now to the point where you have a full stall. We'll get into that a little bit later. Fundamental of instructions. There's been some changes there. There's been a couple increases in the number of uh, tasks or I should say one additional task that has to be performed. Uh, next, use of previously developed lesson plans can be used on the day of the check ride. So whether you develop your own check, um, your own lesson plans, or you purchase them, or you modify them from somebody else, in the past, uh, you could have been requested by the designated pilot examiner to develop your lesson plan for the things that they wanted you to be tested on right there in front of the DPE. Now you can walk in with your lesson plans in place, and when they ask you to talk and teach it to a certain topic, you can simply just um, pull out your lesson plan and start um, teaching that, that, that particular topic. A use of electronic flight bags for cross-country flight planning. Uh, so now you can use things like ForeFlight or Garmin Pilot um, as in terms of cross-country flight planning. Steep spirals. There's been a little bit of a change there. Um, also noted that uh, uh, there's some language about specified airspeed, not necessarily best glide speed, um, is, is specifically called out. Um, lastly, knowledge tests taken under the PTS are still valid. Uh, 
um, even when the ACS becomes in effect. So if we go a little bit deeper now into some of these changes in regards to slow flight, a new task has been added in the area of Operation 10. Uh, task B regards demonstration of flight characteristics at various configuration and airspeeds. Previously, slow flight had been performed at an airspeed at which any further increase in angle of attack, load factor, or reduction of power would result in a stall warning. That's, uh, that's still the case. A task A of area of operations still requires this in the new CFI ACS. However, uh, the CFI ACS has now incorporated a task B, which specifies for flying at what's known as the minimum controllable airspeed, or more simply stated, at a speed where any further deacceleration would cause a full stall. So the examiner can choose between A or B of these tasks uh, to perform, uh, but at the top level, a CFI candidate is now going to have to study uh, as well as uh, perform this skill uh, in preparation for the CFI check ride. So this requirement is a return to past standards for slow flight, which were taught to pilots for decades. So I personally think it's a good one to bring back. Um, again, designated pilot and examiners can now choose whether to test on task A or B. Um, I think probably a lot of them will be testing on task, task B. Um, so CFI applicants will need to be capable of demonstrating flying at these minimum control air speeds in both clean and dirty configurations, full flaps or no flaps, gear down, etc. The next change is in the uh, CFI ACS is a fundamental of instruction changes. So CFI ACS provides more detail on what will be tested on the fundamentals of instruction. Certain tasks have been shuffled around a bit and consolidated down from seven to six tasks and effectively broken out or combined somewhat differently. Uh, a lot of munging going on in my mind here. Uh, for the FOI, the CFI ACS requires one additional task to be tested. Tasks E and F must be done plus one additional one uh, per the DP's choice. Task E is the elements of effective teaching in a professional environment and task F is elements of effective teaching that include risk management and accident prevention. As I mentioned earlier, previously developed lesson plans can be used. So the CFI ACS area of operation four clarifies in a note that previously developed lesson plans from the instructor applicants library may be used. So for example, pilotage and dead reckoning um, lesson plan uh, as part of cross country flight planning, you could use uh, the material that you put together. So as a result, CFI applicants are no longer required to develop a lesson plan on the day of the check ride, nor do they have to perform it by memory or nor do they require to create their own lesson plans. They can utilize and modify third-party lesson plans um, as, as, their, as their choice. Uh, that said, I'll say personally, as a um, CFI, when I have CFI candidates, I really don't want them to necessarily go out and purchase an off-the-shelf uh, set of lesson plans and then wind up teaching me it uh, without any previous studying or homework or really fully appreciation of, of what, they're, what they're teaching. So I, I really suggest uh, in most cases, that if you're going to purchase lesson plans, uh, that you have the ability to modify and edit those so that you can become much more in tune with what you're trying to communicate and teach uh, to not only the DPE, but most importantly to your students. Uh, computer flight planning is explicitly allowed. So area of operation two, task I, navigation and cross-country flight planning specifically notes Preparation, presentation, and explanation of a computer-generated flight plan is an acceptable option. As a result, EFB, electronic flight bags like ForeFlight and Garmin Pilot are allowed for developing cross-country flight plans as part of the navigation cross-country flight planning exercise. However, make sure you know how the EFB accounts for wind correction, magnetic variation, and compass deviation. I've had CFI candidates come to me and never filled out a nav log like a Jeppesen nav log. And then I asked them to fill one out and they wind up going to the EFB at four flight, getting the final answer on the heading and then put that in for their true course heading in the nav log that I present to them. And then they wind up effectively doubling back on themselves, uh, now putting in wind correction, magnetic variation, compass deviation, um, effectively coming up with the wrong answer. So uh, make sure you fully understand uh, your electronic flight bags products and how they work. Um, if you're going to use them on a check ride. And the next item is CFI ACS steep spiral with at least three full terms. Keyword at least. 
So in the new CFI ATS for Operation 9, Task B, Steve Spiros, it specifically states that the application should select an altitude sufficient to continue through a series of at least three 360-degree turns. As a result, the designated pilot examiner has a discretion to ask for three or more full turns while demonstrating the steep spiral maneuver, but not less. And the last uh, thing to bring up is the knowledge tests taken under the CFI PTS are still valid. Uh, so any uh, CFI check rides that happen um, after May 31st, the previous um, CFI knowledge tests that you might have taken prior to May 31st, 2024 are still valid as long as they're within the 24 month window of the check ride. So those are the changes to the CFI ACS that's just come out and I'm actually quite excited about what I see in it. Um, it provides some additional uh, features and capabilities. Um, it will produce, I think, a better CFI candidate. And number two, it'll provide, I think, better training for their future students. Um, if you have any questions or comments about this uh, video or anything in the new C CFI ACS, feel free to leave those comments or questions below and I'll try to answer them. Um, and anyways, if you like this video, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel.